Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the binomial theorem and the proof of it using induction. The binomial theorem states that x plus y to the nth power is equal to the summation of k equals 0 to the 2n of n choose k, x to the n minus k power, y to the k power, where x and y exist in the real numbers and n exist in the natural numbers. To start off an induction proof, we need a base case. For our base case, we're gonna, we are going to choose n is equal to 1 base case n is equal to 1. On the left hand side we see that x plus y to the first power is simply x plus y using basic algebra. On the right hand side we see that the summation of k equals 0 to n equals 1 is the following x n minus k y k so this equals when we we just uh, evaluate it at the two terms which is k equals 0 and k equals 1 so this is going to be uh, let's choose this we got let's see 1 0 x 1 minus 0 y 0 plus I'm going to have to move it on the second line here 1, 1, x to the 1 minus 1, and y to the 1. So let's evaluate this, you know, remember that, recall that 1 choose 0 is equal to 1, and 1 choose 1 is e also equal to 1. So these two factors, you know, are just 1. y to the 0 is 1, and uh, x one minus to the 1 minus 1, which is 0, is just equal to 1. So what we're left with is right hand side is equal to x to the first power plus y to the first power which is just equal to x plus y our base case therefore checks out and we are ready to make our inductive hypothesis so let me switch colors here okay so our inductive hypothesis will be the following we will assume that the binomial theorem works for some m so x plus y to the n, n power is equal to the summation of k equals 0 to the nth power of m choose k x to the m minus k and y to the k so we're assuming that this this works here and what we want to show So what we want to show, oops, want to show, is that the binomial theorem works for some m plus one. That's where the induction happens. So k equals zero to the m plus one. Where we got m plus one k x m plus 1 minus k and y to the k. We want to show that this works. So we're going to have to use some algebraic manipulation to get the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. So this simplifies to x plus y to the first power multiplied by x plus y to the nth power and that doesn't look like an m, there we go, which is equal to the summation of m plus 1 k equals 0 and plus 1 choose k x to the nth power x to the first power x to the negative k power and y to the k power so now we can begin using algebra to show that the left hand side is actually equal to the right hand side so left hand side we're going to write the left hand side here in summation form uh, what is that you might ask? Okay, let's see. K is equal to 0 to m of, because we're using our inductive uh, hypothesis here. As we have x plus y to the nth power here, here, we can simply plug this in because we assume that it works, which is m to the k, x to the m minus k, y to the k. And then we must uh, we must 
be concerned with this part of it, so we just simply x multiply by x plus y. Here we can simplify this into two uh, forms, two factors, because we multiply it by x plus y, so the distributive property allows us to show that x m k equals to zero m k m choose k m minus k y to the k plus y same thing k equals zero m m k x m minus k and y to the k now we put these these uh put the x into the summation the y into the summation and we see that the summation of k equals zero to m m choose k now becomes x m plus one minus k y to the k similarly for the y factor, if we put that into the summation and we see that m choose k x m minus k and then we get y to the k plus one. Next is the trickier part. We want to change the summation index of one of the factors or one of the terms here. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the first factor or the first summation the same. So we're going to say equals m k is equal to zero m choose k x to the m plus one minus k y to the k now when we change the summation index here what we're doing is we're now saying that k will start at one and we'll go to m plus one so we're kind of shifting it up one and inside the summation wherever you see a k it now becomes k minus one so that the expressions will be equivalent. K minus one, y. K minus one, plus one. Now that we've shifted our index here, our next step will be to take out a few factors. Or take out, yeah, take out a few factors. So from the first summation here, we want to take out uh, the factor of k is equal to zero from the second factor we want to take out or from the second summation we want to take out the factor of k is equal to m plus one I'll tell you why we do this in just one moment but let me do the math first so the k when k equals zero this the factor here becomes m zero x m plus one minus zero and y to the zeroth power that's a zero we take out the k, well, when k equals m plus 1, what we get is m, m plus 1 minus 1 is just m, x, m minus, uh, what do we got here? We got m plus 1 minus 1 is just m, simply m, and this just becomes 0, and then y, we got m plus 1 uh, minus 1 let me fix that m plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and then we can't forget about our summations now so we got plus the summation of well k is now going from 1 to m of the same thing m to the k or m choose k x m plus 1 minus k y to the k in our summation over here now is going from k equals 1 to m. m k minus 1 x m minus k minus 1 of y k minus 1 plus 1. Let's simplify really quickly here so that this isn't as messy. Well what is m choose 0? m choose 0 is just 1 we know that. We know y to the zeroth power is just 1. m choose m is just 1. We know that. What's this business here? We got m, we got 1 plus, or 1 minus 1 is 0, m minus 0. This is just 1. Um, this business here is just m plus 1. This business here is just x m plus 1. So we got x m plus 1 plus y 
and plus one. And now the summation stays the same, so we just got xm k equals one, and choose k x, and this is just xm plus one minus k y to the k, and then we'll do this on the second line x k is equal to one to m and k minus one x m minus k minus one or that's actually plus one we have to distribute the negative sign there y and that's just k so it simplified nicely to this business but we still want to get this business equal to let's see where was it here was it this business right let's see what we can do to manipulate this this part of it to look like that but first let's clarify something why did we factor out uh, the k equals zero term and the k equals m plus one term from our from our earlier summations here well if we look at what we were doing we were actually looking at it looking at it like this so one summation had it going from k is equal to zero to k is equal to m another summation had it going from from uh, k is equal to one to k is equal to m plus one so what we were doing was we wanted to sum up all the all of the terms in here and then we took out the factor of k equals zero from the first one and k equals m plus one on the second one so that we had everything accounted for. Now moving forward what we gotta do is we gotta use Pascal's rule. Pascal's rule. So we see that we have an m choose k minus one and an m choose k. What Pascal's rule will tell us is that these can be represented represented by by the um, m plus one choose k. So let's see what we can do here. We still have the xm plus 1 and the ym plus 1 terms. But now we can represent these two summations as one summation due to Pascal's rule as m plus 1 choose k of the same, uh, same bounds here, the same indexes. And everything else stays the same. X to the m minus k plus 1 y to the k. So that simplified it considerably considering that now we just have one summation. Now we just have to do something with these two terms and we, it looks like we were pretty close. So essentially we want to manipulate these terms so, so that, such that, that we can throw them inside the summation. So let's start with the x to the m plus 1 power. x to the m plus 1 can be represented by a bunch of garbage terms such as m plus one choose zero which is simply just one um, and then we got x to the m plus one minus zero and then we have y to the zero why are we doing this well this looks an awfully lot like this term up here we could just throw this in here and then that changes the summation now now the now this entire business will become y m plus one plus now k goes now k starts at zero and it goes still goes to m m plus one to the k or choose k x m minus k plus one y to the k. All we did was we added a bunch of garbage terms here so that we can throw it inside the summation. Similarly with the y to the m plus one power what we want to do is We'll represent y to the m plus 1 and we'll say it equals m plus 1 choose m plus 1 we know that's just 1 x to the m plus 1 minus m plus 1 and then y to the m plus 1 once again we can just throw this right in there and now the entire business up here becomes just k equals 0 to m plus 1 m plus 1 choose k x m minus k plus 1 y to the k and this is our left 
and side. We see that it equals its equivalent when using another use of Pascal's rule. Here we see that it equals. Uh, let's see where was our right hand side. We want to show that yes, here's our right hand side. Ah, it just we don't even need to use Pascal's rule. This is exactly what it is. M plus one minus k y to the k. M plus one minus k. Beautiful. And that is the proof of the binomial theorem. If you have any suggestions for me or find any errors in my proof, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you, and thank you for watching.